So, yes, so today is the second session for the uh, 2022 partner training focused on product demos. So uh, the session, first session for product demo is between 11 and 1 and the second session will follow again at 2 o'clock to 4. And in the first session, we are focusing on uh, two key products for uh, Digit, which is M Collect and Finance. And uh, the product demo is taken by Satish Shen, who leads our product for these two uh, uh, products as well. So yes, on that note, again, kind request, please keep the questions coming. Keep uh, putting your questions in the chat or the Q&A box or raise your hand and we are more than happy to uh, answer them for you. Let's keep this interactive. So yes, Satish, over to you. I will stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Abhijit. Uh, over the poll? No. Yes, I will just flash the poll. So the poll has just started. So we will give some time for the attendees to start answering them for us. Everyone, please take the poll um, so that we can move forward. Okay, so I will freeze. I think 61, 64, oh, still it, it's still coming. Let's give them another few seconds. 80% participated. Okay, I'm going to end the poll now. Yes, uh, can you see the results, uh, Satish? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So 43% understand you will be miscellaneous payment. And 24% have already worked on it, while 33% uh, are new to this. So these are the stats that we have, uh, Satish. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, I think as uh, Abhi has already mentioned, this is Satish here. And I take care or I, I look after a few of the products which are there on the stack. Uh, M Collective Finance being one of them. And uh, yeah, I've also worked on trade license, PGR, mobile apps, and uh, and I moved on to a new uh, a vertical as of now. It's a new mission, we call it as, which is probably finance management system, which, is a, uh, which more, more, more deals with uh, treasury systems and state level accounting. Right? So to start with, I'll, I'll, I'll just save my screen and uh, let me walk you through. Uh, uh, I collect module first and then, the, uh, then we'll take a, a break for a few minutes and then we'll start with finance. Okay. Uh, Finance is comparatively a uh, huge model. We will break that also into two uh, sessions within this one or one and a half hour time. So let me know if you're able to see the screen. Uh, let me share one of it. Screen is it? Um, yes, it's just coming live. Oh, yes, we can see it now. Can uh, somebody from the participants also confirm if they can see the screen? Oh, yes, we can see the screen. So, yes, uh, Satish. Okay. This is the okay. So this is the uh, landing page of the app. I think most of you have already seen. Uh, there is, as you can see in the link itself, it says employee login, and there is two different logins over there. It can collect view. I think most of you, as I uh, as the poll says, would uh, uh, be 24%, around five of you have uh, worked on ULB level payment. And uh, 
most of you like blind people at least are aware of it so still i'll just give a brief what misleading collection and the business process collection is all about and how is it different so, so we have a revenue models like property tax we have revenue models like opvs what and what and sanitation what charges and sanitation charges and trade license so these are the revenue models and you have a specific a uh, system in place to keep track of the mis related to this uh, or domain and also enable or uh, not only like uh, uh, not only maintaining the master data and all uh, other mis provisions you also enable them to do their collections and revenue or processing also through that system itself, so that it is uh, you you have you have good control over uh, what kind of uh, data is being stored and what kind of data or what kind of collection is being processed and how you have to enhance so all all those planning can be done right so, uh, so in, just in case there are about 90 to 150 different types of revenues that uh, you will be will will be getting so if if you don't if you don't have a system in place uh, you, so may, many of them have different names for this. It'd be like, for example, Andhra calls it as non-tax revenue, and few of them call it as uh, miscellaneous receipts, uh, and few call it as miscellaneous collections and so on. Right? Okay. So, miscellaneous collection is a module in place which which enables citizens and the counter employees to do the revenue collections for all their revenues, basically in the digital format. In, instead of getting it or uh, uh, using the GA receipts or manually issuing the receipt, they use this to uh, do the pro process the revenue collections for uh, the miscellaneous collections or non system based uh, revenues, right? And this is also integrated to finance so that all your revenues and receipts that are getting processed in the miscellaneous model will directly get pushed to the finance as well right? on a real time basis, right? Uh, so, you have any queries at any point of time, please raise. Uh, I think uh, I will not be able to see, uh, but uh, yeah, we can see and raise. Let's stop me to discuss all that. Okay. So, so, I'm now going to log in as an employee and then we will move to the citizen interface as well. Right? So, this is a citizen interface, and right now it is the uh, employee interface. Right? choose city yeah so this is a multi-tenant multi-city architecture so hence you see all the cities that are enabled on the platform right so this is the UOT. we have configured few cities over here so i'm logging in as a, uh, a revenue collector who has got you know all the rules similar to a super user uh, so i'm using this so that it becomes easy for me to i don't have to log out and log in to access various functionalities within the module for example revenue with an m collect revenue collector will only have uh, access to revenue collection and couple of reports you will not have access to dashboard and other reports right so similarly uh i see if i have to showcase all the things then i'll have to keep switching between logins that's really good, right okay. so you see both m collects over here because uh, there's a new UI that we are migrating. So gradually we will move all our modules, all our uh, uh, revenue and expenditure modules, or all the screens that you see here, moving on to the new UI. So old UI, well, some of them are still on old UI, but most of them have already moved to a new UI. Right? So I'll show you the difference. So, so this is the new UI, the same as what you see here. Okay. So this will navigate or take the user to the new UI interface here you will experience or you will access the module using the new UI completely. The old UI will more like look, look like this, like finance and this are the old UIs. Right? Okay. Let's jump over to new UI and do some transactions there. Cool. Uh, but this is like this and you will have two options in uh, like, uh, uh, with the name collect basically. Generate chalan and search chalan. So, Satish, one minute. Yeah. I, yeah, I think your voice is uh, echoing a little. I think you'll have to move the mic a little away from. I'm, I'm quite far actually. I'm using the laptops. Oh. Um, uh, am I clear now? Let me raise my voice otherwise. I think he's also under the weather. So, request the attendees to. Yeah. yeah. Let, let, let me raise my voice a bit and deliver. Okay. Yeah. So this is the home screen in the new UI. 
uh, where a uh, employee will have access to all the all the uh, module or services based on the rules that are mapped to it. Okay, so M Collect is four of it right now. <laughs> okay, so in M Collect there are five hundred eleven items in the inbox or in the uh, uh, work list. Okay, there are search chalan and generate new chalan. So generate new chalan is the option to create new chalan and hand it over to the citizen or, or to the uh, uh, citizen who drops into the department or uh, at the department level itself. So every department and every individual who has got or who has got access to raise a demand or raise a chalan will have access to the screen. Okay, and the citizen is supposed to take or accept that chalan, go to the counter or go to the uh, online uh, uh, space and then do the payment okay so if, if he's got access uh, online access you can do online payment for the same chalan using the chalan reference number if not you can do the you can go and uh, do a physical payment at the counter uh, at the you know, at the will be um, so chalan is the chalan so this is the interface where employee can search all the chalans for example i want to see a chalan pertaining to a, a citizen by a chalan number or heading to a num phone number also. I just give one. So these are the mm, chalans that are there for a particular uh, uh, phone number, right? So, so, so most of them are like uh, already paid. That's why you will have the option called uh, uh, download receipt. Uh, if it is not paid, you will have option to do the collection, right? So when I go to collect, so this is a payment information. There is a, a breakup of the charges that is applicable. Okay. You can do pay details, payment mode, and either it is check or if, at the counter if he's doing if he's doing a payment using credit card, you can choose this credit card debit card. If it is a check, then use a check. If it is a cash payment, enter the cash payment. This is optional. This is like basically the manual receipt number. If he's, if they still want to continue that in parallel, they can choose this and do a collect payment. On doing collect payment, you generate a receipt and sends out an SMS to the uh city. Yeah. And similarly, you can also do a, a, a search by any of these filters, by service category or filters. If you want to search all the active ones, you can do an active uh, search. Okay. This is not limited to service because uh, it is not for a particular phone number, it is for a particular status. Right. I can also list out based on the service category. Now I'll talk about what service category means and what it is. Okay. Uh, let's go to generate new chalan and see what it is. Okay. So all the service category, all the services for which they are expecting revenue or they would want, uh, uh, like these are not uh, uh, planned revenues. These are non planned revenues. For example, uh, holdings, uh, it can be um, a marriage all cooking, which, which, which does not have a demand upfront defined. So these kind of miscellaneous ad hoc and contingent or impressed revenues are like recorded using and collect model. Right? So all those need to be configured as service category within the system upfront before they start using it. So these are these various category and subcategories that are configured for it. So when I say, uh, let me take this example and show you uh, within holding. The, it, so uh, any revenue that you collect can be tagged to a, a date range to say that you know this is the revenue which is which is actually for this time period. Okay, so there is, though the revenue is recorded in the month of January, but the, it, it is actually the revenue which is supposed to be recorded or accounted for November or December. It could be any of thing like that, right? So that's the reason. So you work from date to date to which you can tag that. And yeah. Right. So once they do this, uh, uh, from date and to date, then tax. The tax sets are also configurable, configurable based on the service type. Say now, say for example, I choose Canopy. So Canopy will have a different uh, type. 
Kirupi will have Kirupi fee, field collection, CGST, SGST. So these are the ads which are configurable for each of the service categories. So user, before they go live, or the SI departments, the technical team, will need to configure all of it in the backend or in, 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 the, in the configuration files before they go live, right? Okay, so once they do this and submit, a, a chalan gets generated for the details, right? So we're going to like there are some uh, configured heads over here which is, which is, so since we have made it mandatory in the backend also the respective chart of accounts need to be mapped to each of this so when we go to finance i'll explain what chart of accounts is actually right Chart of accounts are missing still there. Okay. You can see this is the Chalan number 0515. I can print it out. So, so the print will uh, you know, take you to a PDF. It can be downloaded and shared, and uh, Citizen also will get an SMS for this. It's moving like uh, Yes, Satish, while you're on this module, there yeah. are two questions connected to this asked by Nitesh Parmar. Is uh, Chalan similar to Bill? Yeah, for, for, for our system, yes, it is similar to a Bill. But it will not have a, uh, in case of miscellaneous collection, it will not have a financial impact, but it will, in our demand framework, it will go as a demand only. Okay, okay. Hope that answers your question, Nitesh. And the second question by Nitesh again is, does the system support multi-currency? No. no. The platform itself doesn't have this multi-currency feature as of now. Yes, since this is built purely for uh, India stack, I think. Yeah, standards, yes. So payment will happen later, yes. So payment will uh, eventually happen after the challenge is like, issued. Right? Okay. Shweta, I guess you had raised your hand as well. You can ask your question. Uh, okay, so do we have all the GST setup and uh, other uh, Texas setups uh, uh, somewhere or we need to enter that amount manually into the yeah, system? No, the GST amount and CST amount is not calculated because the calculation engine is not there. Oh. Uh, you can build the calculation engine if you need on top of this uh, miscellaneous collect screen itself. But yes, because user can enter anything in that amount. Hmm. Yeah, since, since these charges are dynamically populated based on service category and service type, if we have to configure in at the system level for each of the service type, and mm -hmm. the GST and CGST will need to be coded into the system. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that will be taken up at the implementation level, not, yeah. Okay. So, at the platform level, yeah, it comes with the capability for allowing you to put in the calculation and calculate it. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, you, uh, I think hope everyone can see the PDF that is here on the screen. Right? So this is the chalan that gets uh, generated. Uh, one more question. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, we can uh, create a bill for the previous date also in the system. I have seen that. Correct, correct. The previous date is, yeah. So that is configurable again. So in most hmm. cases, what we do is we disable it and we pick up the system date. Chalan date will mostly be the uh, current date only. 
that okay. this, this in, initially it is labeled so that they can capture the legacy entries also or the uh, the gaps that they have missed out the when or during the migration or during the uh, sustainability like, till the time they get used to the system so we open it up so that they don't uh, you know, like if they have missed anything they can uh, rectify or they can re enter those data okay, okay. Uh, there's another question, uh, uh, Satish, from Akshit Rao. UPI payments are possible? Yeah, so that depends on. I'll show you when I go to the citizen interface. So citizen can do an online payment. And if you have onboarded a, uh, a payment gateway, which enables UPI and credit card online, it depends on. If you have onboarded builders, so you, for you, any, any payment gateway integration is safe for you. You integrate with builders call, you integrate with any banks, uh, payment gateway, access bank or SPI or whatever. It's one single integration for you. And the capabilities that that payment gateway offers you is what matters. So when, when you are integrating and when we, uh, it depends on what call these people take. Like uh, if they, like for example, we implemented in Punjab. Punjab said we want to onboard access bank only. So though we wanted to uh, suggest ICJ or any other, they would, so because they already have a tie-up. So they have about nine banks, uh, which are like panel banks. They call it as panel banks. Uh, so we need to choose from that only. Yes, yes, uh, Rajesh. Hello. Ah. Yeah, myself, Rajesh Tiwari. Yeah, this is. Hello. Yeah, yeah, Rajesh, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have three questions. Number one, uh, the tool which you are using, is it an HTML reporting or some other tool? Number one. Uh, Number two, uh, do you have pro forma invoice kind of uh, uh, application or the forms within this uh, application? Come again, I didn't get that. Do, do you know pro forma invoice? Performa invoice. Of, pro forma invoice is a, a it's like a advanced billing. Pro oh, forma, yeah, okay. Uh, is there any facility into this application? On, on the revenue side, that is a billing for. Uh, I, I need a use case for that so that I can just bucket it under finance module or uh, M collect module accordingly. So you, you've got in both. Chalan is also like an invoice. It's like a demand uh, bill. Okay. Number three, ah. uh, why not multi-currency? Why not multi-currency? So our, yeah. our market, our market area is primarily India. So we haven't, so it's for Indian government. And we are, uh, as you know, we are a uh, not-for-profit organization who's, mm -hmm. who's, who's uh, catering to uh, Indian government needs. Okay, understood. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we, you think something? Yeah, there was a, another question by Mr. Tarun Mehta. Are there not any GST masters so that GST amount can be calculated automatically? I, I think I answered that. I thought so. that's the reason I kept. But yeah, so while, while uh, uh, Ms. Shweta was asking, uh, so GST masters, as, as I already said, for each of the service type and service category and type, you need to code in the GST masters and define what is the percentage for each of it. Because these fields are dynamically populated, dynamically configured also. Like for each service type, there is of uh, coding fee, the GST, field fee, service fee. So all those fees are specifically configured for each of the type. So, and GST also varies for each of the type. So in that case, you can have that piece on top of this now. So the platform has got the capability. You can write the calculation engine on top of it. And whenever the type is selected, the GST based on the service uh, fee that is applicable, the GST amount also can be automatically calculated. That can be built on top of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I guess Shweta has a question again. So I'll just allow that. Yes, Shweta, you can ask your question. Uh, hello. Sir, yeah. can you see that uh, uh, that, that calculation engine here, if you have? Uh, so that is written, in, uh, it, it, it's a backend piece, right? Uh, 
Yeah. No, actually, some uh, I have seen in some applications like oh. uh, if you see that Flipkart or Amazon and you are selling oh. something there, so uh, they they uh, they uh, they ask you to select the service type or the the code, okay? Oh. And according to that, they will give you the uh, percentage of the GST. So you can select. Uh, suppose you are selling a, a cotton, uh, the product for the cottons, okay? Oh. So at that time they will uh, they will give you the filtered uh, GST uh, percentage, okay, right. like five percent or ten percent, whatever, uh, uh, and you will select that, and system will automatically pick that percentage and calculate the GST amount. Correct. Right. Yeah. So so that is configured in the backend, or the masters is created for that. For yes. Service type the GST masters are upfront configured and loaded or configured or it, it, it must be loaded up front right correct so, yeah so right now since these fields so uh, you know each of the uh, uh, fee types or the the charge heads basically fee heads uh, for, for example hoardings uh, you can have hoarding fees gst field fee service fee and so on you can have 10 different pieces also and whether gst is applicable or not for this service type and based on what whether the GST should be applied based on service fee plus one, one to three heads, or it should yes. be applied only on one head. So yes. these calculations are very dynamic and very implementation specific. Correct. And also th this should be, I think, uh, handled by the service type or service category setup. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, so this are this calculation engine can be written separately on top of the platform by the system integrators. So, so okay. you are playing the role of the system integrators. So you're, 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 role will be primarily doing this kind of configuration but uh, okay so we can map that calculation with the uh, with those setup service category and service type exactly yes you can do that okay and yes actually i just want to see that only that where we can map that so it's a new service that so if, if, if you know the design so you can configure a new service use the service type and gst and that service will take care of uh, 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 that is right right now not there so the new service that you're going to build will have all those information and you can write the calculation logic on top of it on on the uh, on the interface user interface so uh, we can say this is pending for the customization yes okay right in most cases it would should not be there because if you have a service module, all those will be configured in the service module. This is generic, generic for all type of uh, revenues that they capture or that they collect on the ground, where they don't have a service module like property tax, OPVs, trade license, uh, uh, water, and, water and sanitation charges, etc. Mm. Okay. okay, thank you. Mm, yeah. There are more questions, uh, Satish. Oh, oh, okay. oh, I didn't see that. Okay. Yeah, uh, there is one question by Mr. Kanak Bhatia. Uh, the question is on field officials have to upload any kind of proof of any law violation by citizen for monetary compensation, or it is just on their request? On field officials have to upload any kind of proof of any law violation. I, I didn't quite understand this. Uh, Kanak, can you please raise your hand so I can give you uh, uh, speaking uh, opportunity? Yes, you can. You can ask your question live now. Yeah, Kanak. Good morning, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. I mean, if there is any kind of violation of uh, land, like they have built anything over the place where they are not supposed to build or. Right. Yeah. Like they haven't. So, do does these kind of things require some kind of documentation proof? So, like whenever the official KMC official or some other official is building, like generating some chalan, they they will also send a proof. Like we have proof, and we are sending this along for your like you can view it, or they just send directly the chalan that there is some kind of violation on FBR. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically, to uh, 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 to upload the proof of uh, the chalan raised, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So you can do that. Basically, for each of the chalan screen that you you, you have here, 
whenever you generate a salam, you can integrate with the uh, 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 document module or document services. Okay, so, so you need to like like what we have in expense bill and other screens. We need to give an option for him to upload a, a document or a picture of a approve for a document over here. Okay. Okay, sir. There's a document service that you need to onboard onto this. Okay. Vikas has got another question. Yes. Uh, hi, Satish. As we have seen in Uttarakhand, even after citizen has done payment, it still ah. shows payment pending. How are we tackling this now? Uh, in, uh, payment pending in which screen? Uh, it shows as payment pending in Chalan. Uh, can you please raise your hand, Vikas, so I can give you the speaking. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Or you can either put your. Yes, you can. You can ask your question now. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As we have seen in Uttarakhand, so what happens when citizen has done payment? Uh, in MCS, still in UI, it shows uh, payment is still pending or it shows uh, zero as an amount, but uh, payment is pending is written there. So how are we tackling this now? So if you show as paid only, active and paid, if it is paid, since it is showing Chalan amount, yeah, so this is an en enhancement that we are also discussing internally. I have just uh, uh, we are going to do uh, discussions and we'll like this. So there are a couple of announcements that we are doing on the citizen front, more than on the employee front. Here also, the Chalan amount and due amount. So this is basically due amount which we are showing here. So this mm -hmm. is a, a small customization that anybody can do it. But as, as, as part of the platform, Chalan is underlying uh, component, which will basically add status. And if it is paid, you can download the receipt. Yeah, yeah. Actually, what happened even after payment huh. in the status it shows active. This is and, uh, and uh, because of that payment receipt is not be, will not be generated. Okay, let's try then. So, so this is active, right? After doing yeah. the payment, it should show the status. Is no, paid. no. Uh, Actually, that's uh, we have got some cases where not every time, but sometimes it will happen in MCS. Oh, okay, so that could be because of the services. So, so, so once okay. the the process of receipt generation is happening, could mm -hmm. be a Kafka issue. I'm, I'm not sure. That's a technical issue. I think I can tell. Okay. to the technical team. This, the, both the services, right? The, uh, yeah. the, the receipt services is kicked in, and once the receipt services is completed, it is supposed to update the Chalan service and update the status of the Chalan. Maybe that yeah. piece is not happening. So, we, uh, so you need to look at the log and see where exactly it has failed. Otherwise, okay. the, it, it should be a synchronous update saying once the receipt is updated, uh, the, once the receipt is processed, the Chalan status should get updated as paid like this. Okay. Okay, uh, one more question. Yeah. Uh, if this uh, service drive and service category we can configure ULB to ULP wise or state wise. Because ULB, 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 ULB has yeah. different service, I think. Ah, so this is configured at ULB level, tenant level basis. Okay, tenant level we can configure. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Okay. There is one more question for issues of new build. Does system allow multiple selection of services? No. That's not possible. It, it will be. Right? Yeah, because for each of these startup account need to be mapped, all of that will differ. So that's what we do. Multiple account. Any other questions in uh, Chalan, Chalan and Chalan? Uh, viewing and updation. So, since, since, I'm, since this employee has got a revenue collector role as well, he has got option to collect. Otherwise, he'll only have option to view and uh, 
you can download the result. Any any questions? Shall I move forward to the citizen interface? Oh, one last question by Rosemary Sway. For issuing of new bill, does system allow multiple selection of services? Yeah, I just answered it for that only. It, it, it doesn't. We don't have access to multiple okay. services. Okay. Let's see another question. Any other question? Can I go to citizen interface? Yes, Satish. So just before moving on to that, so the reports which are there on the M collect miscellaneous collect module are still in the new old UI itself. So I'll just walk you through that as well. So we go back to the old UI. So go to M collect and see the reports over here. There are three reports. This I think there's a self uh, understandable. We will see. So there is Chalan register report which you can call out based on uh, service category. I think the UI is pretty. Increase the font. Right. Okay. Service category for, for a date range uh, based on Chalan status and for a locality, if you can, or you can take without you know, giving any of this. Right. Okay. And there is collection report. Collection report is for, for, for me, uh, days collection or for a, a, a date range collection. What are the collections that are done? So for a particular category or service category. Okay. Receipt register report, basically the receipt wise. So this is summary. Collection is basically you will get a summary. Receipt is register is at the receipt level. And you can select the status. Okay. Uh, and category and you can call out all the uh, addresses that are generated. Yeah. Uh, you will have to either build or okay, what computation and reports, the what computation facility and report, what, what, Emmanuel, uh, what is this? What computation and reports, WST computation and reports. I think they're talking about value added. Uh... It's similar to GAT, right? Uh, VAT, yes. yeah, so VAT, uh, 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 exactly like GST only, even the VAT percentage and uh, uh, the, the formula for VAT will need to be configured on top of it. If at all you need need to show up in this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Right. Any 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 questions on the uh, report side? Locality, number of challenges which are there. So these are the summaries that you see. Summary report. Right? Yeah. So this this reports also can be enhanced. Okay, you can have a you can have a drill down report. You can add filters on top of it, right? And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. So there are columns also that you can additionally add on top of it, and, and so on, right? Right? Yeah. Any any? Okay. Similarly, you will have collection report, which works on the similar uh, and receipt register. So, quite a simple module. Uh, yeah, so it can be enhanced in a lot many ways uh, to make uh, citizen services better also. Yeah, so, there are a lot of options for you to work on or for you to enhance so that it can be made very uh, intuitive for the. Uh, citizen and make their user experience better for them. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, if there are no questions, I think we can move on to finance. And uh, if you want, we can take a five minutes break and be back at 11.50. Is that fine, Abhi, or do we continue? I'll ask the attendees as well. Do we have questions? I see Vikas, Rajesh, and Shweta have lifted their hands. Let me just see if Yeshweta, you can ask the question. Uh, okay, Rajesh is also raised hand. Okay, must be the last time. Okay, so if that is okay, because we have another 10 more minutes and uh, there are not much questions again, so we could uh, reassemble back. I mean, the, the link is going to be live. 
Yeah. Uh, not good. I'll just go on mute. I'll not go out of this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can resume at 11.50. It is 11.44 now. Uh, yeah, we can resume back at 11.50. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, so welcome back, Satish. Shall I flash the poll? Oh, oh, one check. Oh, one second, a week. One second. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Extremely sorry. I think uh, I, I missed uh, citizen interface. Uh, I'll, I'll just go through that as well. Okay. Oh, and then we can jump on to finance. Yeah. So in, uh, in the hurry of taking the break, <laughs> I missed. I'm sorry. So sorry. Okay. Yeah. So this is the citizen interface for the M Collect. Let me just go through. Yeah. So this will, uh, yeah. So uh, get navigated for the citizen from the portal that is there for the city. And you will land up, uh, any citizen will land up on this. Yeah, you will have to choose the city before doing any or doing any transaction. And then from here, this uh, all these services that are enabled will be showcased or shown to the citizen and uh, through which he can access. So when I click on my channel, it will force user to log in. Right? Get a OTP also uh, for the same. This is OTP based authentication for the citizen. For employee, we have got user ID and password. User ID is the employee ID that is assigned to him. Yeah, this is the OTP based, and all the challenges are paid. And yeah, you can see there is one, one uh, few of the receipts. Yeah, this is something which we have created now. He can view details and uh, do a payment. So this is how he can view the challenge information over here and see the breakup and then do a payment using online payment integration with the online payment uh, functionality that is there. So if I click on proceed to pay, so Access Bank Payment Gateway is the one which is onboarded now. So because uh, they wanted this, and this is a, a trial. Yeah, if I click on Pay, it will take the user to the Payment Gateway interface. Yeah. So this is a test mode. Yeah, this is again the test uh, test bed of the Payment Gateway, which is given by Access, which is there on the UAT. But on production, you will go to that. Okay. So here, if the Access Bank Payment Gateway has enabled UPI and other modes, you will be able to do the UPI-based payment as well. Okay. For us, so this 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 is the integration piece. So we, uh, as a platform, this will get integrated to the Payment Gateway alone. So beyond that, it is Payment Gateway's features that are enabled and brought up. Right. So Access is just a test bed for us, right? Right now, yeah, so they've given us both. So on the production, the live uh, environment is set up. Uh, for the testing on the UAT, we have we have got the test bed access also. So we can do transactions now, uh, online transaction, we, we, but it is uh, uh, a mock transactions only. It will not be a real transactions. It will not hit the bank account or anything. It will just, uh, before going live, this is an environment where we can test whether the integration with the payment gateway is working correctly or not right yeah okay and this is just to showcase here right so this is how a citizen will be able to see his information i can this is my challenge to see what what all the challenges that are tagged to that particular citizen uh yeah so there are some investment that i have uh, put in as part of the roadmap i think when the team is free we will take up those also very we allow them to do a lot of things like you know, view the previous challenge, download the receipts, and see the outstanding of current outstanding and so on. So there are a few things that I have thought of uh, that is there in the roadmap, which will be, will be eventually done in next uh, next release or a later release. Okay. Yeah. Search challenge. I can do a payment of challenge for any city, but basically I can have a. Uh, uh, like say for example, my parents or my friend, or I want to do a payment for another uh, <coughs> uh, citizen or another uh, customer. So I can choose the city corresponding city, choose the service category, and do a payment of the uh, and search by phone number. It will start the same thing because the number is same there. 
then I, I can view details and do a bit of the same. So this is another feature that is available for search and being challenge of other cities and other citizens. Okay. This is on the citizen side. Yeah. So apart from the internet, so we will have other see, you know, uh, services that are enabled. So this this list will pop up and show show up based on the services that are enabled by the uh, by particular ULB or by the state. Okay. Right. Any any questions on this? Yeah. There is one question by Mr. Kanak Bhatia. Is it possible to pay large amounts like five thousand two hundred in self-assessed installments? Is it possible to pay large amounts like five thousand in self-assessed installments? What is self-assessed installment? Because this is a demand that is not self-assessed; it is generated by the demand by the department, and there is no part payment that is enabled as of now. Yes, sir. So, like, uh, there was an option proceed to pay before it. There was a box, like uh -huh. we have to enter the amount nine fifty there. Uh -huh. So, if the amount uh -huh. is higher, we can pay like four thousand. And before the due date only, we can pay the remaining amount. Yeah. So that is again configurable. So because that has got a financial impact as well and the chalan impact. So, for example, yeah. So, so what we do, uh, uh, like in bills also, we enable partial payment. Only in uh, contractor bills. In contingent bills, we don't enable partial payment, right? Similarly, in this also. So because okay. yeah, so we can. So there is full payment only that is enabled, and this is preached, right? If you have that underlying feature enabled, then you can allow. You can come up with another radio button saying uh, 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 partial, and once he clicks on partial button, this field gets enabled, and user can enter the amount there. But there are a lot of Additional features that you need to come up if you want to implement that functionality because if it is partial, then you will have to show up all the bills that are uh, uh, partially paid and status for that will need to be tracked separately and so on. And what is the deadline? Because Chalan has got a, 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 a validity, it has got a, a, a ranging from one day to 15 days. Beyond 15 days, a Chalan, a to Chalan will get invalidated and cancelled. In those kind of functionalities will need to be taken care of in implementing a partial payment option. Okay. Hey. Ah, any other question? I saw another question from somebody. Yeah, I think Maureen Mabawa has a question. You can ask a question. Yeah. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. I just wanted to find out. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, I know. No, right. I just wanted to find out from the challenge payment that you're making right now, you chose the city, you chose the service category, and you entered the phone number. So whose phone number is that? Like, who's... Yeah. So one is my challenge will show all the challenge that is corresponding to my phone number or my service. Search and mm. I can search my challenge as well as I can search anybody else's also. In mm. case I want to search my parents' challenge that are there, I can enter my parents' phone number here, search those challenge and do the payment. Okay, so basically the person who is um, trying to do this payment, this should be the... How should I put it? This should be the customer who is keying in and putting the number so that they can be able to see what payment they're supposed to make. Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically, you know, for example, I'll show you another use case for that. When you're doing a payment, okay, uh, so Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. so, does it mean that all the citizens are tagged to their mobile numbers? Yeah. So the uh, the user or the citizen is identified using a mobile number only as of now. Okay. It becomes his uh, primary key mm -hmm. for accessing all his services and all his uh, transactions pertaining to the municipal services. Okay. I think that will help uh, answer Maureen's question. Yeah. So yeah. mobile number is what we will use to identify any citizen. Yeah. So if I have to make payment for myself or for a friend or for my father or mother, 
I should use the mobile number which is tagged to their profile. Correct. So that will allow me to search and kind of see what is the payment and make the payment. All right, that is well understood. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Maureen. Another question by John Dixon Andrew. How do we manage advance payments? Do we have advance payments? Uh, ah, yeah. I don't, Herbert also has got the same issue, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, advance payment is not there. So basically, we don't allow payment. So when the when the uh, amount is partial or full amount is uh, selected over there on the screen, the checkboxes, the amount beyond the chalan amount is not accepted because it's it's not a service module. So it's a, a, a what do you call it? a layer on top of the finance just to enable or digitize the ad hoc collections. So even if you pay advance, what do you tag that advance against? So you will have to, you will end up tagging that advance against a, a citizen only. A citizen is identified by a phone number. So you cannot tag it to a particular service. If it is water, uh, water chargers, if advance is paid, you can retain that advance and adjust that advance in the next demand that is getting generated for the water charges. But whereas in miscellaneous, you don't know against what to, against what it, it has to be tagged to and what it has to be tracked against and against what, uh, like, you know, uh, how do we, how do you adjust it in the next demand or next challenge that is getting generated? So those logics becomes very complex. So, so that's the reason advance payment is not enabled on miscellaneous collect. But in property tax service based collections, advance will be uh, will be a default feature, right? How will how is the bill payment handled in the system? Accounting of a debit and credit of the real cash receipt. Yes, yeah. So. This is the accounting question. Yeah, so we can discuss more about it in the accounting in the finance module. But yeah, to just to give an update, uh, high level, uh, when a receipt is generated, there are two types of. So hope you understand accrual based accounting and cash based accounting. So depending on what is adopted, the the chart of accounts that needs to be debited and credited will need to be configured. Okay, if it is accrual based, hi somebody. Hello. Hello. So once Abhi, Abhishek, Abhishek, yes. Okay. Yeah. So if it is, yeah, I, we could, we could hear some voice. So we just confused. Somebody was trying to talk. Okay. So uh, who was that? Who raised that question? Uh, Yeah, so uh, Rosemary. Uh, so if it is accrual based, at the start of the year you generate a demand, and your receivable accounts will be uh, debited at that instant. So when the collections are done, your receivable account, basically the asset account, will get credited. But in cash basis, your respective revenue account will get credited at the time of collection, not the receivable account, right? Hmm. And then depending on the mode, if it is cash mode, check mode, cash in hand, check in hand. And if it is a, a payment gateway, the control account for the payment gateway will get debited. And when when the cash is getting uh, remitted into the bank account, there's a contra entry that you generate. So all this flow is taken care in the finance, uh, uh, in the finance module. Fine. Rosemary, is, does that answer the question? Okay. Sorry, I didn't get that. Uh, can you come again? I think the same question. Can a due date be set for payments? Can a due date be set for payments? payments. Yeah. So, so every ch in this case, in this latest collect. Uh, Case, case you, you can define a validity for each of the chalan and chalan becomes expired or cancelled uh, beyond that uh, 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 due date so after that the citizen will not be able to do the payment instead he will have to come and raise for raise an other chalan a, a new chalan a fresh chalan for the same okay. 
so in in the service based revenue uh, the use case is different where you define a due date and apply penalty also for each of that the uh, water charges are supposed to be paid in uh, 30 days after from the date of bill generation and it is not paying then there is a scheduler automatic scheduler that runs and applies penalty after the 30 days and that penalty logic is also very customizable or very very, very much configurable to the needs of the ulp at the ulp level so that needs to be ordered on top of it based on their needs yeah that's a separate service or a piece that you can uh, uh, put or add on top of it the way that uh, a user portal will be the form of website only for future possibilities of an app also yes yeah, yeah. so the website and the app both are same the, the interface that we are now working on uh, will be will be similar basically the web interface and the mobile interface will more or less be using the same services in the packet so the uh, look and feel also will be same Uh, is there a way that comment notification can be sent to citizen through the admin end, like an official notice that may be uploaded along with the challan for a citizen to view? Yeah. So when when a challan is made, like how I got SMS now for the OTP and for the receipt that I generated, I also so as soon as the challan is created, there is an SMS that is sent out for the challan uh, created along with the link for doing a online payment. Is that what you are mentioning, Akshit Rao? Yeah, yes, yes, that answers the question. Uh, does, it, does it answer the question? Can I mean, yes. So if if it is applicable, you can add. If if that is uh, a late payment head is configured as part of the service category, you can always add that. Okay, perfect. So yes, that brings us to the end of questions on. Uh, yeah, I end collect. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, Akshit, I think uh, since you are seeing that as part of the app notification, there is something called events and uh, like there are documents that I can upload and uh, 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 broadcast it. The documents also can be downloadable for the citizen. So I can enable, I can, I can configure as part of this service. And there are events that I can configure. A new event can be configured, and this will go as a event notification for all the for all the in app like. As if if they are for on the app, if they open the app, it will go as an in-app message. See, similarly, the public broadcast message also will go. So there are two things. This is an event which will have a calendar invite, which which will which will be tagged to a date or the you know uh, event schedule. This is a broadcast message saying that you know the demand is generated and you can send an in-app notification or in-app in message broadcast in broadcast message, which is sent out to all the users who are currently active at that point that instant. Yeah. So this, on top of it, this features are also there. So these are recently added onto the platform. Okay. Uh, this is for Akshit's message. Yeah. Query was super, super. Fine. Uh, yeah. And so no other queries. We can jump over to Pranav. I think. I think. Uh, 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 Abhi, you can. Pull yeah. Just flash the poll, right? So I don't see any questions. So I'll just flash the finance poll. Yeah. Uh, for yeah, the poll is on. Are you opening? We will keep it live for another five seconds. Yeah. Uh, uh, the poll is on the screen. Request everyone to choose one. Okay, I think we'll end the poll. We've got sixty percent answers. So okay. yes, this is the poll response. So forty-six percent have worked on some form of municipal finance ERP project before. Yeah, I think I think we didn't expect more questions, queries, and questions over here now. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Over to you. Yeah. So 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 yeah. Again, so the finance is more of a, a backend or a 
employee focused so you will not have a citizen interface for that after as well so sorry uh, it's the same login i'll use the same super user login who's, who's got access to most of the uh, options yeah so finance is not there in the new ui it is there in the old ui There is for the finance. So there's uh, uh, comparatively a huge module when compared to NCS miscellaneous collection. Uh, so I don't think as we are running short of time, we will be able to get it get into each of the transactions. So I think I'll quickly run through the masters and transactions and walk you through uh, uh, high level of most of the functional, like eighty percent of the uh, used functionality that is there in the finance. If possible, we can complete hundred percent if there is. Uh, if time permits, okay. Uh, I start with masters. I think uh, most of the masters are self-explanatory. You will you will be uh, aware of it. But yeah, the 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 key master is the chart of accounts. So this is the uh, most important or the key master that is there in the chart of accounts. This is as we say, it is hundred percent compliant to National Municipal Accounting Manual. All the all the masters and all the standards and all the. Uh, 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 configurations or uh, you know, attributes that we define for each of these masters are in line and in sync with National Municipal Accounting Manual only, right? Yeah, and you can see there are four uh, fundamental types of accounting heads, income, expense, liability, assets, and you have major heads at the second level, then minor heads at the third level, and uh, detail at the fourth level, and the transactions are recorded at this level, okay? These are more more of grouping and extracting reports uh, in uh, various reports that is there in the chart of the finance model. Right? Uh, for example, trial balance can be called a balance sheet or income expenditure statement and function wise income expenditure statement. All of it can be generated at major core level, minor core level. You will not be able to do any transaction at this level, but yeah, uh, the transactions are recorded generally at the detail core level. Right now, you see four level. Uh, Chennai is the only place where we have configured five level. Yeah, you will have sub minor, uh, major code, minor code, sub minor code, and then detail code. Yeah. They, they wanted to make it very comprehensive, very uh, detailed uh, in terms of reporting. And so they have introduced another level so that their reporting becomes more clearer and more uh, MI specifically focused. MI is focused. Okay? So they have more slice and dice of, of, of options for generating their financial statements and reports. <laughs> okay. So the attributes that we uh, what is the maximum number of characters can be defined in the chart of account. Characters in the sense of uh, the description or the number. So I think right, right now in the back end, what it supports is for the code, like what you see here, 110101. Uh, this is about 20, around 20, 25, I think. And the description is up to you. So you, you can, uh, uh, this is like, I think 250 or something. Yeah, the description. That doesn't matter anyway. So the levels and how you configure the levels is what it matters. This is anyway, I think any, any, uh, master data, you can define your code length and description length. That's up to the uh, implementation also. Mm. So that can be defined during implementation then? Yeah. Yeah. So only thing, it's a change on the, the core part. If they change or if they change the design at this point and you, you need to take care of it at all levels, like even in the transaction and even in the reporting. Uh, how many levels of chart of account can be defined? Is there a limitation? Uh, there's no limitation now. Uh, you can have uh, so the maximum what you have defined. What what uh, national municipal accounting defines is four level, like what you see here on the screen. But uh, uh, there is they it also prescribes that you know in case state or uh, ULB wants they can define another level on top of it. Yeah. So platform supports you any number of levels, uh, supports defining any number of levels of chart accounts. But uh, yeah, it's up to you. How do you group each of it under each of the uh, sub minor head? So th there'll be a lot of work that will be involved if you want to reconfigure the number of levels also at this point. Okay. 
Okay. Nice example is that Chennai. We have configured to five level. We have, but the uh, but the standard number of levels that we put up on the platform is four levels. Okay. okay. Whether accrual based accounting is possible? Yes, it is hundred percent accrual based accounting only. It is just that on the ground, you most of the government entities, most of the ULBs don't adopt or don't understand. So to, to be to be straight, <laughs> to be very uh, off the record, yeah. Uh, 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 most of them don't understand accrual based as of now, at least in the municipal world. They might understand uh, accrual based in a commercial or service based industry, but uh, with municipal world, uh, most of them don't seem to understand uh, accrual based. Yeah, because there are a lot of use cases so uh, that they will have to take care of if they want to implement accrual based. Okay. On the expenditure side, it is fairly simple, but on the revenue side, there are a lot of challenges to be taken care of for implementing a network based accounting system. How do we manage? Okay, that is very difficult. Accrual based, yeah, right. One more question. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm finding it difficult to switch between QA and uh, the screen. I think if there is any. I will manage that for you, Satish. I, I'll uh, keep asking you the questions on behalf of them. Yeah, thank you. And you can keep it focused on one screen. Yeah. So the other question is, how do you manage language on the chart of account name or they are all in one language by yeah. Mr. John Dixon Andrew? Correct. Yeah. So, so right now, everything is in single language. Yeah. So if you have multi-language enabled, then you will have to uprint, define the localization for every master that is there in, 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 the, in the system. Like for this code and this this description, so the, which is what we have done in uh, PFM is like M Gram Seva. We recently got down. Uh, we support three languages over there, and all the master data chart of accounts, so be it uh, heads, be it uh, uh, the type of property, the type of connection, the type of cycle. So all these are master data. We request them to give us the localization code or local uh, the script, Punjabi script and uh, Hindi script for each of the language or each of the master description and the labels that we have on the screen. Data entry will be in English only, but uh, the master data and uh, it, it is like semi uh, language implementation, localization language implementation that we can do. Data, excluding data entry, rest everything else, all the static data that is loaded in the screen, in, in the system as a master, and all the labels that you see on the screen can be supported in multi-language. So once you choose a language from here, uh, once you hear from the profile, uh, the menu, the, the description, the master data, uh, master data, everything will, will start showing up in the selected language. Right? Right? Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That is one thing. Uh, apart from that, yeah. Uh, let me just explain you on the. Uh, uh, Attributes that are there as part of the chart of account. Okay. Chart of account code, name, uh, the description, there's a type. So this is standard. Yeah. Okay. Type is basically the uh, type, like, you know, to group it under and to take various call on when, when the user is doing any kind of entry, what kind of validation. So, so even a non accounting user or non account user can use this finance accounting system because we have a controlled data entry flow defined in the system. So, it doesn't have to be a accountant to use the system. So, so that's the reason we have a lot of configuration from the backend so that we can have a controlled flow. So, so depending on the type, there are various validation that we take care of. So income means it, it, it needs to be credited in most of the cases, only when there is a reversal entry, when only when there is a, uh, a you know, cancellation entry, this particular income code will be debited. So, so these kind of rules are coded in. And a liability code is so income expenditure, reliability, and assets. So liability codes are mostly used for uh, payable entries. Uh, control codes are used uh, uh, for payment gateway. Control codes are used in case of uh, 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 payment transaction or contra entry transactions are done. So there, these uh, codes are pre-configured. So user does, uh, don't have to select those code explicitly or he doesn't have to do the data entry for that. So system pre-populates that and push, like, you know, records the transaction in the packet. 
and it will showcase. It will just show what is the code that is used or pre-configured and populated. So those kind of uh, control and those kind of configurations are there in system so that it makes user uh, you know, easy, or it makes users uh, life easy for recording any accounting entry. It doesn't have to get confused. Or it doesn't have to understand the accounting concepts, debit and credit entries. Like uh, one of the attendees was asking about what should, what is debited and what is credited is taken here or not. Yeah. So where the, uh, for the counter user, when he's creating a creating a receipt for a chalan or for a property tax surveys, he just have to choose what mode he is doing the collection, whether it is a cash mode or a check mode. Rest all the configurations are defined in the backend itself with, with respect to that service. It takes the corresponding code and debits and credits that code, and based on the mode, cash, cash in hand or check in hand or uh, uh, pay, payment gate or a debit card or credit card, the respective control code will get uh, accredited. Okay. So, so control code get debited and revenue codes get credited. Right. Okay. So classification, whether it's a detail code, so this will define whether it's allowed to do the posting or not. The purpose is actually what what there are about 50 to 60 purposes that we have configured in place. Whenever there is a service, like payroll comes up and says, okay, payroll module is up and live. And if they want to use one of the GL code for processing their salary payable code, you can use this purpose ID and map the chart of account to a purpose saying that salary processing, salary payable salary for salary processing. Once uh, this particular chart of account is tagged to a purpose called salary payable, payroll mo module will use the salary payable purpose and fetch all the or fetch a jail code which which is supposed to be used while processing the salary. And uh, finance will return the service code uh, for this particular jail code for the payable for for the salary module to generate a salary bill with corresponding chart of accounts. Okay, the construction of the ledger entry is done at the service module itself. And the supporting parameters are fed from the finance module, right? Okay. Yeah, so this is like function defined. Whenever the budget check or budget is defined, whether function is mandatory or not, you while recording a transaction for this GL code. So you can universally define, or you can also define at the uh, chart of account level. So budget required is or no. Yeah. This again, you have a universal flag, whether budget, should be applied or not applied at the tenant level and at the finance module level. And you can also come up and say, okay, for this particular chart of account, you can exclude except from budget check, test, you can have budget checks. So th those kind of forms. So in case you want to do that, you will use this slide. Okay. So that's on the chart of account. Yeah, so in case you're creating any detailed code, you can go to any of the minor heads. This is the minor head, click on add it will pick up the running sequence number that is available in the you are able to see the screen the pop-up screen oh, oh no okay. i was be i have been explaining all this while without okay i've just shared one screen sorry let me oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. open it and open it here That comes as a big because this is a finance, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so there's another question is accounts head configurable state wise? This is by Abdul Bashir, yeah, yeah. It is, it is state wise only. We recommend them to keep it at state level, not at ULB level, so that their reporting at state level becomes much easier or much, much clearer. Otherwise, if each of the ULB follow their own accounting at the detail code, yeah, so they cannot configure or have their own codes at major code and minor code because this is what is defined by the national municipal accounting manual hence they are not allowed to do or allowed to modify any of the major code and minor code uh, a state can decide to modify uh, a, a minor code but still most of them don't do it if they want to modify they will put up a request to the uh, mawa mawa will uh, decide like you know whether we, we will collate from multiple states and decide whether the new minor code needs to be added or not, and then they uh, circulate it. So they add into their master and then circulate it. It will circulate the same to all the states. Now at the ULB level, so so yeah, you you are able to see the screen. I'll I'll explain that of a detailed yes, code yes. how a ULB can do it. Yeah, this is what I was explaining. Account code name, description, type, classification is detail code. Purpose is something that we configure for like you know fetching. Uh, uh, 
fetching a particular chart of account which needs to be used to construct the ledger entry at a service module level, like works module, inventory module, payroll module, and so on. If th these service modules are there in place, and if they have to construct a bill object and push it to finance, how do they construct? Like, you know, they have to use uh, appropriate jail codes, right? So, so certain jail codes will be configured in the module itself, and there are certain which they will need to fetch on the fly or on dynamically from the finance. So using this purpose ID, one approach is using this purpose ID. So, so it will ask whether there will be a call from the to the finance model saying, give me the chart of account for say, salary payable. So if the purpose ID is mapped to salary payable over here, then it will return this GL code, which can be used by the corresponding service model to construct the ledger like posting it. Okay, is clear? This are the chart of accounts. Okay, yeah. So there is one more. Uh, if I have to add, there is another pop up that has come up here. Let me open that also in the same screen over here. Hope everybody is able to see the screen that is popped. Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is a minor level. So if I click on add, it will show me the running uh, available number at the detail port. This is like, so right now, if you see this screen, there will be up to seven. So the next and the available number for creating a detail code is 08. Hence, you see this code over here. You can give the name, description, what type it is. This is by default because the major code belongs to income. So this also is tagged as income. You user will not be able to edit this. Classification is code because this is this is the last level. Okay. Purpose. So yeah, so these are the purpose codes which I was talking about. So if it is a set module, if it is a salary module, inventory module, depending on that, when the chart of account is defined, you map it to the corresponding purpose. And there are detail type. Yeah. So this is the subsidiary ledger. I'll talk about this also later when we go to the master. So there are standard sub subsidiary master, uh, employee, contractor, supplier. Okay. I can um, tag this to multiple uh, uh, detail types also, sub subsidiary ledgers also. So that means whenever there is a transaction or posting entry or posting of ledger entry that's happening against this code, it uh, the user will be forced to enter the breakup at the detail code level also. For example, I'm entering a telephone expenditure code. So for 2101005. Okay, that's a detail code. Telephone expense is being entered. Expense, expense, uh, expense bill is being created, right? So since it is tagged to account detail type, I will need to, I will be forced to map it to a subledger entity also. Say, for example, it is mapped to employee or a contractor or employee. Okay, employee is tagged. Okay, now employee wise. So there is a 10,000 rupees of a telephone expenditure bill that is paid to the BSNL. Okay, and uh, it is for five bills, five employees, telephone numbers, which is uh, telephone connections, which is there in the ULB. So I will need to give the breakup of all the five telephone connections also, saying that, you know, for telephone connection one, it is 3,000, for the rest, it is 2,000 to 2,000 each. Okay, so that breakup will need to be given for the 10,000 rupees amount that is getting posted against this ledger. Right? So account detail type is used for maintaining the subsidiary ledger wise like your posting, active for posting, budget required as or no, function required. So this is again, same flags which I spoke about. Right. So this is how uh, the chart of account and the uh, detail code and the minor code, uh, and major code are configured. In most cases, we don't give access for the user or the uh, uh, end user to configure or play around with this master, only the admin or uh, the technical team at the central level only will have control over this master. So, so they they can they can disable and enable and uh, they can if they disable and carry forward the balance, uh, there will be a mismatch in the opening balance that is transferred to the next year. So on. Right? So all this will happen to control all that issues. So all, all, all that uh, you know, human errors. So we don't give access to the uh, uh, dual bill level or current level users. To these masters, so mostly, right? or if, 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 if they want to control or do some modification, they need to put up a request and then get access to it. Right? Yeah, that, that again depends on how implementation they want to configure or, or who wants to control it. 
detail code. Yeah, this is same. Like I can enter a detail code and then, and then choose uh, a particular detail code and modify it. Yeah. The modification would look like this. And these are the account detail type, which I was talking about. I can say to multiple people like this over here. Like this. Now it is mapped to two types of account detail type. So when I'm doing a transaction, I either need to enter breakup by employees or by drawing officers. Okay. Right. That's all the uh, data of accounts detail. A CVA report is is just a report that enables user to list all the all the chart of accounts by various search parameters. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any questions? because this is the key master that we have. If you can see some yes. of there are a couple of questions, uh, Satish, uh, by Rosemary Sway. Can the chart of account be centralized, meaning at the ULB level? Centralized at ULB. Centralized means it should, will be at state level. Why? What do you mean by centralized at ULB level? Uh, I didn't get that. I think they are trying to ask if this can be centralized. Is that right, Rosemary? At the ULB level. If it is centralized, that means it is uh, a, a common a, a chart of account master or a common chart of account master list at the state level, which is common for all the ULBs. Is that what you meant? If you can type in your queries in the chat, Rosemary, that will be helpful. Or if you can raise your hand, I can give you access to speak. Yeah. Uh, Emmanuel, yes. To answer your question in the meantime, uh, uh, yes, uh, you you. Uh, you can import so there is a report that you saw so you can write queries on top of it to fetch the chart of accounts from the back end and for uploading yes so we have used that's a back end activity as of now so we are not allowing uh, them to create uh, all the 900 uh, of the 700 detail codes uh, from the ui we are configuring it, configuring it from the back end only itself. so we, basically the api based upload <laughs> Can the account, yeah, okay. Does the system have a mass action functionality to create a chart of account? Yeah, yes. I don't, that's all. Uh, Herbert Manayi. Uh, yes. So it's a, it's a, it's a bulk chart of account creation process that we have adopted as of now. So far, we have not allowed anybody to create all this chart of accounts. Only if there is a new chart of account which they want to introduce, there is a, a detail code level or a minor code level which they can access. And then create a new chart of accounts. But at, at the initial stage, we configure and upload all the chart of accounts. It comes as a default master as part of the platform only. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. That's also hope that that is answered, Herbert. Rosemary, your you you can you can ask your question. I have given you the moment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning, team. Uh, I was asking regarding chart of account because when he, uh, uh, the instructor was demonstrating, I saw that you can set it at city level. So I was asking if it can be centralized at the uh, uh, ULB level as well as uh, central government level, and he has responded it very well. I have understood. Thank you. Thank you. I think you answered this as well, right? Can we configure multiple chart of accounts? Yeah, that's basically bulk uploading. Yes. 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 So creating of mass, multiple chart of accounts at once. Basically, you cannot create using UI. It has to be loaded. It has to be taken care of as part of the backend activities where you load using the Excel sheet data. So right now we do that. So we have uh, Python script or uh, scripting uh, a, a return on top of the Excel data, which takes care of uh, creating the chart of account master at once before we configure any any city or any any state. Okay, I, I think uh, we have a very short time now. I'll have to rush through. Uh, so deductions are the ones where uh, uh, so, okay. So so in a, in a salary. So this is something which is very specific to a digit platform because you will I don't think you will find it in many other, many other accounting packages because generally what they do is 
when when you do a statutory deductions from your service uh, vendors you you deduct income tax you deduct uh, uh, service tax you, you you have various type of types of deductions right cess deductions also will be there cess uh, cess uh, and then education cess labor cess and so on so all these need to be remitted to the respective department third party department at the start of the next month and within within a, within a time limit like you know within next month of 10th you are supposed to remit all the deduction that you have done for the previous month of one from 1 to 30th of the previous month right so, so what happens generally is either you will so in most cases which i have seen in ap is uh, they miss out either they miss out or there are cases where they do double payments also that is if they are religiously following there are uh, human errors which has cost uh, wherein they have done the double payment but uh, 99% cases the uh, what i have seen is only misses so matlab so they uh, the cess that has been collected from the as part of the property tax which is collected through check will get completely missed out which are collected through cash might might get remitted on the same day along with the cash remittances but which are collected through check so this is all this is because of the loopholes in the process itself the process engineering itself was not defined uh, uh, properly uh, with in alignment of the finance uh, uh, process so if that was defined properly so they wouldn't have missed out on this right so to cater that need the deduction module is in place very uh so when you tag a deduction for example these are the deduction heads which are there tds deduction labor says and so on. so you can have any number of deduction heads that for it we have only about 10 over here okay so now if at all there are uh, contractor like for example tds from contractors you you have generated 500 contractor bills in the month of uh, december in the previous month so we are i am supposed to remit all of it before january 10 So in that 500 bills, I would have directed various TDS from various contractors, right? Very different types of and various amounts, right? So I need to go to the ledger and see what all I have directed as TDS in the month of December, from starting from 1 to 30th, fill it out and list out everything in a place and take the total amount and do a remittance payment to the uh, 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 tax department, right? So now. this what this module facilitates is with so there is a deduction payment module separately the transaction this is the master setup okay so what what this basically does is when i when a user searches by the deduction code it lists out all the deductions entries that are made or or all the bills where the deduction was directed in any kind of transaction it not only contractor bill it can be supplier bill it can be a general voucher also it lists out all the transactions so that user can review it once select all the transactions at one select and make a consolidated payment so by this all this final transactions get tagged and also marked as paid for remittances deduction remittances uh, uh, payment done and in the next month when you go even though you give the date range as previous year this transaction final transaction for which remittance was already done will not appear once again for the remittances so by this the errors of doing double payment is con completely controlled and the misses the the, the missing uh, 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 remittances of uh, of deductions also will be completely done away with right okay that's that's the feature of uh, uh, this the, yeah, i think uh, this is also opening in a new screen yeah let me is a pop up functionality that we have right okay deduction code deduction name uh, to which a sub ledger it is tagged to so that you can so this sub ledger tagging is also there because based on the uh, sub ledger type you can define the tds percentage in your service module so this master facilitates that earlier we had now it has been moved to the corresponding service module so that in works module with the works project management module or works management module when a contractor bill is raised the uh, tds calculation can be automatically done based on the type of sub ledger and based on the direction code type that is configured here okay it is remitted to central government i think the code if all this can be configured so that you can remit, do a remitted uh, 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 rtgs remittances or uh, nft remittances a uh, different payment is also enabled on the system for deduction so deduction payment is separate transaction in this in the system okay right any questions please uh keep adding 
yeah so contractor and supplier is basically the contractor is a simple contractor master that we have enabled we can uh, capture the gst and the uh, ifsc code uh, gst register number bank information and uh, other statuses as uh, uh, mandatory over here so that we can generate a rtgs payment for this contractor only if there is a ifsc or bank details mandatory entered here so when the when a contractor bill is selected for payment and if this contractor uh, 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 name is appearing and if he's got bank information, if, if he doesn't have bank information, RTGS mode of payment will not be enabled. It will throw an error message saying RTGS information is not available. You cannot do RTGS payment for this particular bill which belongs to a contractor who doesn't have RT, uh, I have bank information tagged. Right? So those control is in place so that if you want to do RTGS payment, bank information becomes mandatory. Okay. This is contractor. Similarly, you will have supplier. Any, 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 any questions in the contractor master? You have any? You can, you can put up otherwise. Yeah. So this also is a subledgery uh, or, or you know, subledger entity, um, which is which is there as a standard. So there are user defined subledger and system defined so subledgers. Drawing officer, employee, contractor, supplier, project code and uh, 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 purchase order codes. So these are the standard subledges which are configured or pre-configured as part of the system itself, okay? Fund, yeah, I think most of you know it is fund-based accounting system. Each fund represents a balance sheet uh, or like, you know, you can say you can generate balance sheet for each of the fund in the system, okay? Just uh, to show yeah, how funds are configured. You can also define the levels over here, but I think uh, we, we we stick to defining one level uh, fund as of now. There is no hierarchy in the fund, like what you find in scheme and uh, function. Okay. Right. Uh, schemes, under each of the fund, you can have scheme and sub-scheme defined. And you can tag the scheme and sub-scheme to, to the uh, uh, transaction so that scheme based and sub scheme based reports also can be generated for creating your utilization certificate. Okay. Function, yeah, so the same as uh, fund. I think also when the, in the municipal world, uh, the budget is defined, budget is defined based on four parameters like mandatory parameters. Chart of accounts is by default should be there, basically, the objected or the nature of expenditure, nature of income, what you call it as. In addition to that, for each of this combination, so you will have a department uh, uh, under which this object head is uh, used. Okay, a department, a function, and a fund. Okay, under fund one, under function one, under department one, for telephone expenses, what is the budget that you define? And what are the transactions? So every transaction that you capture, these three attributes becomes a mandatory uh, field or a mandatory attribute or recording any financial transaction in the system, which is fund, department, function, chart of accounts is anyways the nature of expense or nature of revenue that you're uh, capturing. Right? Ah, the scope of treasury software integration, yes. We have done uh, in AP with the, the old ERP system that we have got. Uh, yeah, so that depends on the type of treasury system, some of them, some of them use SAP. Most of them I have seen is uh, uh, NIC system, which they have adopted, like uh, Bait Punjab, Maharashtra is on TCS system, uh, Maharashtra, uh, Punjab, UP. Uh, so most, most I, I think about uh, seven, eight states, which I've heard of so far is on NIC system. And some of them are on TCS system. Some of them are on SAP system. Yeah. So, yeah. So when you talk about treasury software integration, what, what exactly is the integration for processing your revenue or for processing your expenditure? Yeah, because I know so, so treasury becomes a bank in the municipal world, right? So treasury is also treated as a bank and treasury bank account or the PD account, what you call it as 001 and 002, uh, that 16 digit code it ends up with 001 and 002, VN and voted and uh, uh, VN and NV, right? Non-voted, voted and nominal. So these bank accounts or these uh, are treated as a bank account and created as a bank in the chart of account okay and then when the mode when the when the payment mode is selected we need to choose treasury as a mode and then process the payment so that 
when the treasury treasury as a mode is selected right now you will you we have not enabled uh, that integration over here okay when the when the uh, mode uh, treasury is selected as a mode of payment the integration will click in will will kick in and uh, will kick in and it will send out a bill on to the treasury system so that a bill processing or bill payment processing can be done on the treasury side yeah yes for all type of expenditure from consolidated fund exactly this is this is what so so we have done that uh, we it, it took about so that was the first implementation uh, in ap and uh, uh, municipal government was the first department which was onboarded and they took about 10 10 uh, a minimum of 8 months i can say and within this 8 months we have integrated with this in 10 different versions of apis specification because as they integrated with us and they as they explored the use cases they kept on changing the way they have to integrate or onboard or on the departments so yes sap system is been implemented in ap not for the live example otherwise it's just a a, a, a a integration point with respect to the treasury system for processing the collection for collection side it, it acts the treasury acts as a payment gateway on the expenditure side it acts as a bank where uh, we you need to access that through a new mode mode of payment being introduced in your payment transaction stream that's all okay yep uh what is this tarun uh, mehta does that answer the question uh for single budget it can multiple chart of accounts be used yes so that is defined in the budget grouping so budget definition and budget grouping me we use we have a, con a concept of choosing from head and to head while defining a, a group head so uh, when when i say budget group uh, and against which the uh, right now it is one to one each chart of account the date or uh, range will be from and to will be same and the group name will also be same as the chart of account and the group is used for defining the budget but uh, in case you want to use it for a range then uh, a, a, a budget group name will have a, a specific name for the group and then you can define the range saying from major code to two major code or if it is de at detail code level then you can choose from detail code to two detail code that is possible <laughs> since that process is difficult we have now enabled upload budget which is at the detail code only when you are uploading budget using excel sheet if you are defining and processing the budget definition and budget approval workflow in the system then that is possible fine okay uh Abdul, I think your question is answered on the treasury side. Right? Okay. Yeah. So sub-ledger configuration is something which I was talking about. Uh, right. Let's see. Yeah. So user-defined sub-ledgers are the ones which you can modify, and you can define masters also for that. Like telephone is a user-defined. I can define all my telephone numbers as a as a master over here. but when you see this sub ledger categories that are there in the system these are the sub ledger category these are system defined sub ledger category and you can see the entity from where it is being pulled this is coming from drawing officer master employee master supplier master contractor master and uh, purchase order master work order and this is coming from accounting entity master so this is account uh, so what whatever is defined under account entity is user defined and user can modify on top of it okay fine right. so yeah if you want to create a sub sub ledger master you can see view yeah so there are three telephone numbers that we have defined under uh, sub ledger type telephone if you want to create you can create for telephone only you cannot create for others because others have got a dedicated master in in, in the system as a service uh, employee will be in hrms supplier and contractor is there in the, in the supplier contractor master and so on right fine okay bank i think it's very clear you create a bank you create a branch you create an account okay and then add checks to each of the account now i'll just show you the bank account here how so to to create
create a bank account, you need to have the branch in which the bank account is. So you create a branch first, then you create a bank first. Okay. So banks are preloaded as part of the platform for, uh, based on the RBI's uh, list of banks that is configured in their website. We have taken that RBI's bank master and loaded as part of the master over here. Okay. Bank is preloaded. In case there is new addition of the bank, then so you, you can create that bank you can create bank. And branch in which the startup account, in which the ULB has got a bank account. So you need to create only those branches in, in the corresponding bank and then create the bank account. Account is this account number, like what you see here. And internally, it will also create a chart of account, which will be tagged to this bank account using which you will do the accounting and uh, reconciliation payment, transaction, books of account is maintained for this bank account using this general ledger. The, this is the code that is reflected in the balance sheet and trial balance for, for, for showing up the balance. Right. So there is purchase order and work order. I'll show you how work order. So in case work order system or work management module is not there, a basic work accounting is, is enabled on the finance. So without this, if, if works management is in place, we will have to disable these two options and the bills will directly flow in from the works ma management module itself. If that is not there, you will have an option to create a work order with basic information in, in what is the work order amount, uh, total work order value and advance paid to the contractor and who's the contractor and what is the uh, order date that was issued. So the basic MIS information with respect to work order is ca captured over here. And based on this work order, you will create contractor bill in the system. And that there is a simple validation which says you cannot, the number of bills that you create against this work order cannot exceed the total sum of all the bills, cannot exceed the total order value over here. If it is 5 lakh or 5 crore, if there are 10 bills, each of it uh, costing 50 lakh, the 10 bills are the maximum that you can create because total of 10 bills is 5 crores. And beyond that, you cannot create any bills. That should be the uh, final bill with which you would be creating the last bill, right? So those kind of controls can be put on the finance model itself, right? Uh, so that's all the master part. Okay, I'll quickly show you the transactions where you will see uh, uh, the bills accounting and bill how bills are processed. So expense bill. So this is uh, this is the MIS as I was telling. Like if budget is. Uh, configured for fund department and function. So these three are mandatory because my budget is defined based on these attributes. Okay. And the chart of account is anyway, you know, the primary, uh, the important piece of the transaction. So that will always be here without which you will not be able to save the transaction. Also. Okay. Fund department, scheme and subschemes are not mandatory. If at all you want to call out report by scheme and subscheme, you, you can force data entry for each of the scheme and subscheme. Fund source to again to slice and dice uh, when you uh, extract a report by fund source. You can say from what 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 was the source of fund for which this particular transaction has been processed for. Okay, fund department function bill type to which uh, bill subtype is basically you can tag this bill using expense bill. You can count all types of bills also. So mostly it is contingent. In case you don't have contractor bill or salary bill enabled as part of the finance, you will you will uh, treat the expense bill and track that expenditure bill uh, and you know, group it as salary bill, uh, sa uh, sa uh, salary expenditure using this bill subtype. Okay. Subledger, yeah. So for example, if it is contingent, I can choose subledger. I can do a, 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 a contingent or a contingent bill payment to a contractor, employer, or anybody. Or I can choose not to have a subledger also. I can directly say it is without submitter, but the check will be issued in the name of uh, any, any XYZ. Okay. Okay. Template. So this is every time if you have a standard list of codes that you are adding, instead of adding one by one, you can choose it from a template also. So if you choose this, by default, whatever is configured in this template will get populated here. This would be subledger type that you select. So, so that can be configured for subledger type and, uh, and a, a bill type, expenditure bill or subledger. What is this? What is that that you want to populate? So once you select this template, uh, so the default list of chart of accounts gets populated. Okay. 
So for example, this is like input. Input expenses. Recovery schedule, I don't need recovery yet. I can choose to delete this. Okay. So that will be one. Here, based on the purpose ID mapped and based on the subledger code that I have typed, that I have selected here, contractor or this thing, those four codes get populated. If it is not there, then it will show me only the expense bill payable. So because this is not mapped to subledger code or any subledger type. If it is contractor, all the list of payable codes which are mapped to subledger type contractor only will be shown here. So that user will not do any kind of errors. He will, he will have limited list of code here to choose. So the error rate will come down drastically in this case. Yeah. Okay. And those are the four, two or three codes among which he will have to select. If it is only one, there's no option. You'll only have to select one code and choose the amount over here. And then do here. And then this comes up. Yeah, it's not required. Right. I can upload documents and supporting documents over here, choose the next level of role authority and forward it, right? So yeah, you can see an option, create and approve this. As I said, during the initial stage of implementation, we enable this because they, they're, if they're not used to the, uh, uh, like, you know, a bill processing process. So it's a process re-engineering, right? In a cash basis, we, it's only the payment that they capture or they that they record. In case of accrual, even the bill, goes through the accounting process wherein the posting of ledger will happen even for the bill. So, so they might, they might find it difficult. So, and that's the reason. So they take the offline approval and they record that impact financial impact using the bill creation screen and while slowly to get used to it, they start forwarding it to the next level. You define the basic workflow and then define the uh, comprehensive a detailed workflow All the six level of workflow can be configured. Uh, you select the user and configure. Uh, configure the workflow and then once he forwards it to the next level user it goes through the approval workflow and on final approval it comes to the finance department for creating the voucher for the bill similarly this is the expense bill creation you can define checklist also for the same uh, this is again configurable you can define the configure for whatever checklist you want similarly you will have contractor bill okay but this will be based on the work order so if i select the contractor from here it will list out all the work order that is active for him. So once I select the work order, it will pre-populate the department to which it belongs to, fund to which it belongs to, and the rest information can be ready here. And there will be a validation that you know if it is ex exceeding the total all the previous bills, including this bill, is exceeding the total order value. It will uh, avoid or refrain user from processing this bill, saying that you know this total bill amount is exceeding the order value. So the uh, the duplicate entries or uh, multiple bill entry for the same expenditure will not be will not be supported or will not, will will be completely controlled. Okay. Right. So this is how the bill entry is said, yeah. See here, the chart of accounts, be, be it a, a, a road manufacturing or a park uh, manufacturing, like, you know, park construction or park setting up, or it can be installation of a water unit or a, a, a building of a, a bridge. So all those chart of accounts or the asset code corresponding work in, work in progress asset code or the asset code itself, if it is completed, it's an asset code, right? So those asset code will need to be manually selected. If it is integrated in an integrated world, the works management system is in place. The the chart, the chart of accounts or the uh, the construction of this ledger posting will happen in this uh, the core service module itself. So they will for each of the uh, asset building or if for each of the asset being constructed or each of the expenditure type, there is only a chart of account that is pre-configured. So while defining the estimate itself, they will choose the uh, chart of account which needs to be accounted or which needs to be built for once the work is completed. So that is. Uh, 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 captured at the time of estimate itself. Estimate is, uh, estimate is the first step in the works management model. Oh, I think most of you will be aware of that. Uh, so they first create an estimate that goes through tendering process and then the the, the uh, contractor is awarded the work order, the LOA is created, the milestones are created, then measurement book is captured and then uh, contractor bill is created based on the measurement book. 
and so 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 the budget check happens as the estimate creation itself you can have a planning budget defined at that point so all this so works module module is again a huge comprehensive works module that we have in the older version uh, which has got asset and finance and inventory well integrated to it okay so once that is there so this contractor bill also will be disabled from here okay so the contractor bill is there supplier bill is there and then ocho from bill so once the once the bill is gone is gone through the workflow cycle and uh, after the final approval is done it will appear for voucher creation so uh, uh, for the accounts uh, section user okay, so if i have to create one i have to choose yeah so i choose it list out all the uh, uh, bills for which uh, which is like fully approved and voucher not created okay so when i click on this the ledger posting is pre-populated here the so account user will validate whether the expenditure entry i can go to the source bill also and see what what kind of source uh, what, what kind of bill was created and whether the expense expenditure entries have uh, like, you know, uh, selected properly or not and the deduction entries if any are calculated properly or not so he, he will do the basic validation again he can create an approval at this stage itself or send it for approval for the accounts officer junior accounts officer he will send it to accounts officer and then it can, it can be approved by the accounts head or the commissioner and once voucher from bill is completed you can create a payment for the same bill payment so bill payment will be like if i'll choose a fund uh outstanding bill payment There are, there are zero contractor bills and supplier huh? so there's no supplier bill also so it will come as pjb expense bill user can choose or select so if it belongs to same uh, department and same function and uh, if it belongs to same fund then he can do multiple payment otherwise there is a check that it should belong to same function and department at least department and function if, if you are enabling uh, cross function payment then uh, you you can have different functions also but yeah so i can choose multiple bill payment over here choose the mode of payment and generate a payment so click on generate payment on click of general payment it will show me the bill details over here i just have to choose the bank account from which i'm doing the payment for the ledger posting or the ledger entry uh, is automatically constructed from the from the system itself the the bank code is uh getting uh, uh, uh credited and the corresponding payable entry for which is used in the bill will get debited accordingly right okay once the payment is done user can go and assign a if it, if it is rtgs based you can assign an rtgs assignment if it is check based you can assign a check assignment and these are the supporting features to cancel and reassign a new check and cancel rtgs number and reassign a new rtgs so that's on the payment you have another payment for deduction which is like deduction payment which i mentioned if tds i can list out all the all the uh tdss which are there okay uh and then make a, a, a single payment for the same and then there are any outstanding payment as of now if there are there is like similarly i can click on if there are 500 transactions which is shown which are outstanding to be paid I can select all and do a single payment. On submit, it will go to a payment screen, similar to what you saw there. It will process a payment, single payment. And this gets tagged as remittance processed. So it, it's an expense general voucher. Voucher number is this, in which 200 rupees of deduction was made against it for contractors. Right? That's on the deduction part. General voucher, I think it's generic general voucher that we have got. Uh, it, it is used by the accounts personnel only who knows what to be debited. So this is the only screen where accounts knowledge will come into picture, and he is supposed to. Uh, he will need to be aware of what code need to be debited and what code need to be created. But the basic validations will be in place that you know you cannot do a, a wrong entry which will which will uh, take the balance sheet or trial balance or finance reporting for a toss because ledger engine takes care of uh, debit entry and credit entry matching. Oh, validation like for every transaction if there is a transaction submitted the total of debit and total query should match so those 
and the subledger wise entry uh, also will be, will, will be taken care of. If, you know, if I choose telephone uh, or or a contractor bill, uh, uh, contractor payable account code, I will be forced to select the uh, contractor wise breakup also over here. Okay. Reduction view also payment. Yeah. Bank reconciliation is able. Yeah. So you can do a manual bank reconciliation. You can upload a statement and run the bank reconciliation also. Okay. Yeah. So this is majorly not used because yeah, there are ground issues that we still need to tackle in most cases, which we have come across. Okay. So this bank reconciliation, contra entries are like cash remittance and bank to bank transfer. When you transfer from one bank to another bank, and there is a uh, 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 revenue module may we have got uh, cash remittance and check remittance. All the cash collections at the end of the day need to be remitted into the bank, right? So there's a contra entry that is generated at this instant also and check remittance. All the check when you remit it to the bank. So check in hand will get uh, nullified and the corresponding bank will get emitted. Check in hand will get credited for the amount of remittance that you do. If, if 10 checks are collected in a day and if you remit all the 10 checks into the bank, your check-in and will generally be uh, zero at the end of the day, right? The net balance from the check-in and counted should be zero. Similarly to the cash, cash in hand should become zero when you do the contra entry. Okay, yeah, I think uh, whether the supplier can e-file bills. No, it's not there as of now. It's it's a portal feature. I think uh, it, it cannot be a... Uh, 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 finance specific feature it can be a piece or a functionality on top of uh, portal or on top of the uh, citizen centric services so so the user will need to take a call on whether it should be a supplier bill or contractor bill yeah though there is a, a supplier specific logins that are enabled then that's a separate piece that need to be built on top of it so that you'll have to choose a, a purchase order against which you can raise a supplier bill. so all this will need to be opened up so that you can uh, e-file or submit the supplier bill against against a purchase order, right? So all those validation will need to be taken care, of, which like once uh, a supplier is registered in the system, and you, once you create a purchase order for that supplier, once he logs in, he will be able to access the information pertaining to the purchase order in that login, and uh, uh, and he can raise the bill only when you enter a gate pass or when you uh, create a MRN. The supplier so can create a supplier bill against that MR, MRN for a given purchase. Order. So these controls will need to be this this kind of functionality will need to be built in if you want to enable the supplier e bill e filing of bills, right? Right. Uh, okay. okay. There are a few questions, Satish. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Emmanuel Oloto, can we process multiple vouchers for the same vendor? And the same company at the same time? Same company, multiple vouchers in the sense, yeah. So there are multiple bills, and each of those bills will have voucher to bill is one to one. Okay. Uh, so I, I know what you're mentioning, it must be on the bulk posting. So you choose multiple and do a posting. Yeah. Uh, so that is possible in case of receipts. So when, whenever there is a receipt, so it, all those receipts are automatically uh, pushed onto finance and uh, the ledger posting happens on a real-time basis because validation of the ledger entry is done on a real-time. But whereas for the bill processing, for each of the bill, there is a date and there is a validation that will need to be put in or will need to be taken care of, which is manually done at this point of time. So multiple bills, each bill will have a different calculation that need to be validated by the accounts user. That's the reason bill to voucher creation is one-to-one. -one. But whereas receipt, there is not even post bill posting need that is required as of now because it's real-time gets posted at the end of the day you just need to generate a report and validate and remit it for the cash remittance is is is, is like a validation check in place wherein like you know you will approve it and then the contra or the uh, contra entry for remittance of the cash will take care of will be taken care of so bulk posting for expenditure is not needed bulk posting for revenue is not required because it is posted on a real-time basis. Can we automate recurring vouchers? Yes, you can do that. Uh, that's a that's a uh, automation piece that you will need to write. But yeah, uh, recurring vouchers can be automated. Like you know, uh, in Chennai we have done that on 30th of every month. Uh, the deductions 
remittance for those five standard deductions were automatically created irrespective of whether the accounts is closed for that month or not on the on the last day of the month after 12 o'clock uh, it will uh, fetch all the all the remittances that are done for this file and for for, the, for this specific five heads only because they were mandatorily be mandatorily uh, required to be re remitted on the you know, fifth of next month within the fifth of next month so so it will force the user because it goes and sits in the inbox of the user and it will uh, by default force the user to process that without fail so that was that was also one of the things mm. uh, for the upload of the bank statement what file does the system start? yeah as i said most of them are still not using it because they are not getting so we have a standard template for that uh, let me show you that um, There's a template here, so which they will need to uh, uh, download, and uh, they need to ask the corresponding bank, or they will need to convert the bank statement into the template that is defined in this Excel sheet. Similarly, you have got in the budget also. Uh, show you that budget screen, budget upload budget. So there is a template. Yeah, so these are the sample templates that we have uploaded as of now. Yeah, so this is a user will need to download this template and define the budget. Basically, uh, 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 define the budget, approved budget in the format that we have given here and upload it. And then approve the uploaded budget and then up, uh, the active budget will fall in place and the budget validation, uh, 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 the new budget, uh, budget validation based on the new budget uploaded will kick in from that point after the uploaded budget is approved. Right. Uh, yeah. So those validations can be added in based on the bank and all that. So right now there are basic validations that are pre-configured. We it, it checks like you know for what date it was already uploaded, for what dates it's being uploaded. If there are duplicate entries by check number and the transaction reference number so all those basic validations are there yeah so, so the, no banks were ready to give in a format that multiple corporation or the ulb was requesting for so they will need to manually put it into this and then process it hmm. okay right any other questions yeah bulk payments for welfare schemes example pension yeah, so this is again, so uh, a pension module. So, so we have, so, so, uh, I, I basically have uh, done this pension module. It, it was a record implementation that we did in Nagpur. Uh, there was pension department, there was salary department. The processing was completely outsourced to a third party. And we brought in a system which was like, more or less help them to generate the pension bills on a, on a bank basis. Like you know, there, are, there were about uh, 5,600 pensioners. And there were about seven banks uh, where uh, 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 where all these 5,600 were spread across, right? Okay. So, so all these all the pensioners were requested to open a bank account in these seven banks only, this listed seven banks. And so we were processing the pension processing by these banks. And each of this for each of the bank, there was a, 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 a employee or a, or a accounts section user in the pension department who was responsible to generate, validate, and process the pension bills. So we created a pension module there, uh, processed it, and yeah. So and then once the once the pension bill uh, uh, for a group for a combination of a uh, bill, uh, you know, a, a, a section and a bank, and uh, it can be for a, uh, a a department and a section and a function. So you can also have function level salary bill created, and for that group of people or group of pensioners or the salary uh, employees. You create one bill, consolidated bill. Yeah. So once this list of bills are processed, you are allowed to generate a bank advice. So at at, at the service module itself. So if it is RTGS payment, you can uh, 
uh, if this subledger wise information is pushed, processed or pushed on to finance, you can generate advice from the finance module itself. Otherwise, if it is a consolidated bill against for a group of thousand employees, if you have one drawing officer against which the finance entry is being made, the breakup of the employee wise advice will need to be fetched from the payroll system itself. From finance, since it is processed by drawing officer, you will get it by drawing officer only. Then you get that uh, uh, RTGS payment advice from the finance, uh, get the advice, uh, uh, employee wise advice from the payroll system, and uh, give it to the or issue it to the bank as a, as a soft copy or as a, a, a hard copy. And based on that, the payment is done. So, so which is what we did. Uh, once the pension bank was uh, 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 pension slips are generated, pension bills get generated, salary bills also get generated by uh, bill clerk wise. Okay, BCs we call them as okay. And uh, so for uh, uh, for pension it is bank wise. Once the bank wise bills are uh, 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 processed through OCHR creation and payment creation, and user can wait for three different the payments to be processed basically for all the seven bills seven uh, banks group of pension bills are approved and paid once the payments are done we can take a consolidated consolidated report of all the pension advice uh, advice and then uh, take that soft copy issue it to the bank for the payment along with the payment reference number so that is how refunds are managed refunds in the sense the emd refunds if it is EMD refunds, yeah. So there are two ways of doing it. If you want to have a tracked refund, then you need to integrate with the works module or you need to build a, a EMD module on top of it. Or if works module has got that EMD piece, you can initiate that payment from the works module itself, like how e-procurement does. So if you do a payment, uh, if, 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 there is a, if there is a tender, so EMD is processed against the tender, and uh, then, uh, and the collection is also processed from the you know, uh, procurement module itself. Now for refund also, the refund is processed from the procurement module itself so that you will have just the impact over here. You, the, the payment posting will happen at the finance side, but uh, the initiation of the payment transaction happens with a controlled flow, data flow from the procurement module itself. Otherwise, you will need to create an expense bill and Tag it, choose the corresponding uh, uh, contract report and make a payment. So, so finance will have the finance ledger will have as the con sub ledger wise ledger will have an entry saying that EMD was refunded for so and so uh, contractor on so and so date for the so uh, for the corresponding for the respective uh, uh, tender number. Unclaimed pensions. Yeah. So if it is unclaimed pension, yeah. So this is very specific to the pension module only. The pension module will need to take care of. So I, I so in, in, the, in the use case which I was talking about in Nagpur, unclaimed pensions will not appear because it will. Uh, so uh, the pensions are managed by the municipal corporations only. The pension pay, payment is going out of municipal's fund or municipal's bank account, not from the pensions uh, department or pension section, like uh, like what you see in the central use cases. The pensions are transferred to the bank account and bank account only when they claim they they uh, they make a, they do a pay, payout. Uh, so uh, in this case, that is not that, that that's not the case. That is not not even happen. As far as there is a life certificate submitted, uh, the pension will get processed into his bank account. So there is a life certificate that he has to submit every year. So there is a three months timeline also. If life, if life certificate is not submitted, the pension becomes in pensioner master becomes inactive, and for him the pension slip also will not get generated. If life certificate is submitted on a yearly basis, he will be active, and there's no question of uh, unclaimed pension in case in, in, in such cases because it will get processed. Another yeah. question here, uh, Satish, by Mr. Nikhil yeah. Patwa. Are the reports IFRS compliant and does the system accept bank statements that are IFRS compliant? Yeah. So, yeah. So, bank statements which are IFRS compliant as of now, no. Uh, so, most of the report and most of the uh, format that you see will be is, is in compliant with uh, National Municipal Accounting Manual only. Uh, we haven't uh, looked up IFRS formats and compliance as of now. We haven't reached that. 
Okay, but is it customizable? I mean, uh, yeah, it is customizable. Yeah, yeah. You, then, yeah. If there are any standards prescribed by the IFRS standard I mean, the format, mm -hmm. you, 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 we can customize on top of it. Okay. I mean, I think this is all coming because Digit was built for India stack. And yeah. now we are looking at taking this global through the partners. Then, of course, there should be some customization that they can do, but it is possible. Yes, they, it, it is possible. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, I think uh, we were overshot. Any more questions, or do you do, are we done with the demo stage? Yeah, I think yeah. There's a few more things which I can just give at a high level because we are already uh, oh, twenty minutes over, yeah. minutes over for the time. Uh, so the transaction, I think more or less I've covered most of it at a high level. Administration, I think this is for cancelling. This is given to the admin user only for cancelling a voucher, cancelling a bill, and so on. And yeah, masters we have gone through budgeting at high level. Like I said you are, if if you are defining and processing everything, you will have to define a group, define a definition, basically the tree structure of the budget, and the appropriation. Yeah. So, so once you define group and definition, you can create budget. Okay. Uh, which is which is not there. So and then process it through the system itself and get the approval. If that is not adopted. After the offline budget processing is done and the standing council is like approving it, the final budget, the budget committee and the standing council and the political, uh, uh, the team, which is the, who's involved, the council, basically the councillors uh, who are approving it. Once that approval is done, you can define or like bring it in a format that is described in this, upload the budget, approve it at one shot. You don't have to go through the flow. Since most of them were not adopting this process, we had to, we were forced to bring bring in this functionality of allowing them to upload the approved budget, final budget into the system and approved by a corresponding authority and use that budget from there on. So budget is there. And then, yeah, important. Yeah. Uh, does it allow adjustments for budget? This is a question by John Dixon. Yeah. Correct. So this, this, this uh, uh, budget appropriation is basically the uh, adjustments of budget. So you can remove from one and add from one and remove uh, mm -hmm. uh, remove from one, so basically adjusting the budget from. Yeah, that's again a configuration. So if a budget is set for five, or let's say for example fifty crores, and you don't want to exceed or uh, uh, you know decrease that budget, so you want to just adjust, then you'll have to do the additional appropriation. Or if it does, if 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 it should be an additional of, of uh, addition of budget beyond the fifty crores, then it will go through a workflow. Okay, so that feature is also right. Uh, that's on budgeting. Yeah, reporting. So we have various uh, buckets of reporting here. I think financial statement. This is like this is completely compliant with the uh, NBAM standards. Only NBAM reporting standards. So, no, uh, I think NBAM also. Uh, 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 what do you call? Inherits most of the most of the reporting standards from the IFRS reports only. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it has got the municipal. Uh, multiple domains or needs tweaked into the report formats in most, in most cases, in most of the reports. Yeah. Accounting record, records, yeah, these are all uh, standard reports that you will see. The, I think most of you will have access to it. You can uh, you can play around also. Okay. MIS report, deduction reports are like, as I said, remittance pending and deduction summary, which which we were like talking about all the all the uh, uh, oh, expenditure bill where certain deductions are still pending to be remitted. So those okay. pending reports and uh, deduction summary can be called out from here. And there are revenue reports. This is the collection report, like uh, all the cash collection that, that are done across services, paid property tax, charges, or whatever. So uh, remittance of collection report, all the remittances that are done for a particular day and what is pending. So both can be called out from here. Uh, that's on the reporting side. Yeah, setup is something which is internal. Uh, this is for bank account mapping. This I, I think uh, you you want to do a controlled flow of like you know I I've, I've done property tax collection. I want to remit it uh, into a specific bank account only. So so so, the, so those bank account to service code mapping is done here. So that the collection of certain type will be forced. By user or for, for user to remit it into a specific bank account. Only. So I, my, so for example, what we have seen is like I've got a collection of, of collection from water charges. I end of the day I do a remittance by mistake. I remit it into a bank bank wrong bank account in the system. Though I have remitted into a right bank account physically, 
uh, in the system, I record it as a wrong bank account. In that case, what do I do? So, so to control all this kind of data entry uh, mistakes, we have this mapping also. That like you know, for this particular type, it will always be tagged to a single bank account to it. If there are two bank accounts, which is like variable, it only show two bank accounts in the drop down. So, so that I can I can choose user can choose any of these two, right? Yeah, budget control type, as I said, uh, whether it should be mandatorily there, none, or a warning. So there are three types of budget uh, control that I can enable in the system. Okay, uh, this is just a configuration. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, trade and activities. Yeah, the financial year, all the configuration of uh, financial years. Uh, what is it? Meantime, while it is getting loaded, do we have budget adjustment? Yes. Whether budget validation? Yes. There are three types of budget validation that I spoke about. Uh, one is like which which you can configure in the system. Mandatory. Mandatory means it will not allow user to to record a transaction beyond the budget limit, right? Okay. Um, this is the, uh, how, do we, how do we budget adjustment? Was there budget validations available in the topic? Yes. Yeah, there is various level of budget validation that you can put in. You can put in budget validation at the time of bill or at the time of voucher and payment also. So because if it is at payment, it is more of cash basis. If it is at bill, it is more of accrual basis. If it is at uh, uh, a bill or at, uh, or at an estimate, then it is a planning budget that you can kick in. You can have combination of planning budget and actual budget check also configured in place. Can we have multiple level of approval for same transaction? Yes, there are like six level of approval that you can configure. Six or any number of uh, approval that you can configure, depending on the resource that is available. Keeping in mind the that the next session. No, no, no. That is from me okay. for all the attendees. I can see all the questions. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. To, yeah, okay. No, okay. I think most of it is addressed. Yeah. Sure. So because we just have another half hour, and the attendees will need to take a break as well. Yeah. Right. So perfect. So is that, that that does that complete the demo, Santi? Yeah, I think yeah. Most of the thing at high level is completed. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the most exhaustive model under digit, I suppose, finance. Yeah, right. <laughs> it is it is a huge module. Yeah. Works and finance are the ones which are like pretty huge, and you will need at least one full day mm. uh, to walk through at a high level. Mm. Even at high level. If it is to be a detailed one, uh, for Maharashtra panel, I think uh, we have done a detailed demo for two days also for the of the same module. Sure. We can take that up on a one to one request if any of the partners or the attendees would need as such. We could take that on a basis. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, on that note, thank you so much, uh, Satish, and all the attendees as well. And, yeah. uh, let us catch up again in the next 30 minutes at 2 o'clock IST for the next session, which is on uh, property tax and online building plan approval as well, yeah. uh, which will be taken by other members of the team. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Satish. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, I think you can get in touch with Abhishek uh, uh, or Abhishek will lead lead uh, you to me in case you have any questions, if you want to clarify anything on the finance piece or finance integration piece with respect to any, any module that you're talking about. Thank you. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll, have, we'll ensure that the questions reach you. And uh, if there's any need, I will also set up a call as well for the partners. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. See you all in the next 30 minutes then. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.